Hello and welcome to The Warshipologist. You're watching a channel devoted to the history of USS Wasp CV-7 and we're looking at her story through photographs and other historical documents. In the last episode we looked at the launch of the ship and the tragic events that unfolded in the skies above. In this episode, the Wasp finally takes to sea on her builder's trials. The last photo we looked at in episode 4 was just after launch on April the 10th, 1939. We're now in August 1939, and about a month before the start of the war in Europe. The photo is dated as August the 2nd, 1939, which was a Wednesday. I mentioned in the last episode the structure of the forward flight deck, and we can see in this picture those extensions in place on the main superstructure. A lot of progress has been made on the island and surrounded in a cocoon of scaffolding, the enormous funnel that was a distinguishing feature of WASP is taking shape. Just forward of the funnel you can see the mount for the Mark 33 director, which has yet to be fitted, but more about the directors later. Just below the director mount is the bridge, which seems to be open. I can't see a single person working in this photo, but that may be down to the resolution. There is, however, a large crowd on the dockside. Perhaps the workers are getting their assignments for the day. Or maybe they're getting a ticking off for marking the paintwork with the raft. Now fast forward two months to October the 10th, 1939. It's a nice sunny Tuesday at the yard. Judging by the shadows on the hull, it looks like the morning. The first thing that stands out is the bridge windows and the primary flight control have been installed. The bulwarks around the bridge are still missing. The heavy 5-inch anti-aircraft guns have finally been fitted. The forward gun points aft and the other points out towards us. At the front of the flight deck the landing lights have been installed. The Yorktown class and those following were designed to land planes over the bow and the stern, which is why you see the letters printed fore and aft on those ships, and only aft on Lexington, Saratoga and Ranger. At first glance there doesn't seem to be much activity going on, but if we zoom right in we can see quite a few people beavering away and getting the carrier ready for service. This photo is from the NavSource website and it's labelled as April 1940. I had always imagined that this was Wasp finally leaving the yard and heading to Boston for commission, but in an exclusive for the Warshipologist I'm going to prove that this photo was actually taken on December the 18th, 1939. I've managed to find several photos that I believe were all taken on the same day, and we'll look at them in due course. In this picture, the ship is being shunted by numerous tugs as she prepares to pass through the Fall River Road Bridge. The tug pulling the bow line is one of two diesel-powered tugs that operated out of Boston, the Venus and the Luna. The Luna has recently been renovated and you can visit her in Boston today. On the right, by the large crane, is the fitting out key where she's been moored for the past eight months since the launch. Some key details to note for reference are the crowd of people on the radar platform, the forward starboard 5-inch gun platform has been hinged up in preparation to pass through the bridge, the roller doors are up here and here, and the gangway is stowed on the outside of the hull. In this photo of the yard in the 1960s we can get a good view of the Wasp's route out of the Fall River shipyard which has been documented by the following photos. The previous photo was taken from the bridge looking southwest. This is what it looks like today and shows the sad demise of the shipyard. As I said in episode 2, I don't have a photo of Wasp passing through the bridge, but we do have pictures of other fine ships making the passage. Here's Lexington CV2 passing through the old Swingspan Bridge in 1928 and some frantic looking tug activity going on. This one is Massachusetts in 1942. This photo was taken from Ferry Point. As we saw in episode 2, 
Hancock in 1944, taken from the same position. And finally, this is the USNS Mission San Fernando coming into the yard in September 1964. So the Wasp has now cleared the bridge and is making her way down the channel. We can see the same identifying features as the last image. This picture was taken from Hunt Hill Point, looking southwest. You can't see the yard to the left, but you can see Quincy Point and the entrance to Town River. This is another picture from the same position, and you can see the Luna or Venus towing and two tugs standing off astern. This is the view from the position today. The ship makes her way further down the channel and we get to an image that was used in an article in the Evening Star of Washington DC and it's dated December the 19th, 1939. Builders trials began yesterday for the new airplane carrier WASP shown above as she left her Fall River Yard dock to cruise off the coast for a week. In conformity with naval custom, dimensions and other specific descriptions of the ship were not disclosed. During launching of WASP last April, two naval airplanes crashed in mid-air, killing four men while flying over the area. And then there's another article just below, which has the headline, Tarpaulins Shroud Deck on WASP's Trial Trip. Uh, so it goes on to say, uh, Tarpaulins shrouding sections of her deck to protect secret equipment from prying eyes, the United States Navy's newest airplane carrier, the $21 million WASP, steamed off the New England coast last night on a builder's trial trip. Approximately 5,000 persons lined the shores of Fall River as the huge vessel, most modern of its type in the world, was eased by tugs into open water. Officials of the Navy and of the Bethlehem Steel Corporation's Fall River plant, where she was built, declined to reveal her course or to give an exact description of the vessel. At the time of her launching last April, she was described by Washington sources as having an overall length of 739 feet, a 110-foot beam, and a displacement of about 14,700 tonnes. Seventh United States naval vessel to bear the name, the WASP is expected to be turned over to the Navy next April. So that dates this photo as the 18th of December, which was a Monday. Just to give some historical perspective, the day before this photo was taken, the Admiral Graf Spey was scuttled in Montevideo in Uruguay. All the identifying marks we have seen are present in this image, except the radar mask, which is obscured by smoke, and the forward roller doors, which are inconclusive. I was able to zero in on the position of this photo thanks to the people in the foreground. You can see that they're standing on a line of rocks, and these are still present today. Here's the same view today. Here's another photo taken moments later. You can see the exhaust gases blowing forward as in the previous photo and the same identifying marks as before. Also in this image you can see Raccoon Island, Grape Island and Rose Cliff. And that's all I have for this sea trial. The next two photos are dated as February the 22nd and 23rd, which was a Thursday and a Friday. The weather is calm but a little gloomy and also a little foggy. The hangar deck catapults have been fitted as well as the booms for the ship's boats. In the top picture Wasp is going full astern, which was a requirement for landing planes over the bow. Here's Yorktown doing the same in 1937 and Yorktown CV-10 off Trinidad in 1943. This is another picture of Wasp heading up the channel from the shipyard. It's undated but you can see the booms, the catapults and the absence of the gangway which only means it was taken after the 18th of December and the Venus or Luna is astern. There's a little bit of information about the sea trial in Norman Friedman's U.S. Aircraft Carriers, which is pretty much the go-to book for U.S. carrier design. It says that the trials were quite successful. 
On three high-speed runs, the Wasp averaged 73,906 shaft horsepower for 30.73 knots. This would have been 75,000 had it not been for a defective receiver pipe on the third run. This in turn gave an estimate of 29.8 knots in operational conditions, which was very good considering the design speed was 28.7 knots. Finally, this is a photo from April the 2nd, 1940, and it looks like a sunny Tuesday morning. The ship is due to be commissioned later this month, and it's four years and one day since the keel was laid. If we compare this to other contemporary US carriers, that's a long time, especially when considering this is a mini Yorktown design. Only the Lexingtons took longer, and that's because they were laid down as battle cruisers and were subsequently redesigned as carriers. The port anchor is laid out on a raft. The five inch guns are covered with dust sheets. The Mark 33 gun directors. The deck edge elevator is having some work done. Just after the deck edge elevator, on the catwalk, you can see five lots of 50 caliber machine guns that have been covered over. There are five more aft. Another raft alongside. Painting, perhaps? It's left an ugly smudge on the hull again. OK, that's it for this episode. If you like what I'm doing here, please like and subscribe. I've also set up a Patreon account for those of you who would like to contribute towards this project. Thanks a lot for watching, and see you in the next episode. Bye.